And so when you're in the program, what kinds of classes do you need to get your degree, your certificate, and then once you have gone through all the classes, what are the career or transfer opportunities? Well, the degree has three tracks. The first one is the game art and animation track, and that's for artists and animators, the people who create the characters and environmental assets and model them and add motion capture data to the models. We're starting with motion capture training now. Um, so that's the art side of the degree. Then we have the programming track, and that's really for the programmers, the people who are going to program how does the artificial intelligence work? How does a game get networked so that many people from all over the world can be playing it simultaneously? And our third track is the production and design track, and that's more for the game designers. And when you say design, we don't mean art, we mean designing the rules of gameplay, quests. How do you win the game? How do you play the game? Um, and production, how do you manage the design process? How do you manage um, from the beginning of, you know, let's make a game to here's something on the shelf that people can buy or download? And once that happens, uh, students can transfer, they can go right into the workforce. Right. We have an articulation agreement or a transfer agreement with the University of Baltimore, and students can complete their AA degree at Montgomery College and transfer seamlessly to the University of Baltimore, mm -hmm. which is now teaching classes on the Shady Grove campus. So it's about you know five minutes from Montgomery College. Mm -hmm. They don't have to commute to Baltimore or anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, once all those UB classes are in place at Shady Grove. Um, and there are other universities in the area also teaching game design, like UMBC has started a new program. There's also DeVry and the Art Institute with programs. Um, and students can transfer to one of these institutions. And like I said, we, had the, we have the agreement with the University of Baltimore. And then there's so many different career paths that they can take. And one website that's really good for students who are interested in this field is the International Game Developers Association, igda.org slash breaking in, mm -hmm. where they can find out more about it's all the different in the career mm -hmm. paths in the industry. All right, we've got about a minute or two in this segment left with our students and with Professor mm -hmm. Solomon. I want to ask you all to talk about a project that you had a chance to work on, Hydro Hijinks. Jen and Steve, tell us a little bit about that and what, what happened with that. Go ahead, you, you were the, oh, okay. the project guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hydro Hijinks was a water management rights game where there was two countries, uh, one Topia and Tunisia. <laughs> And uh, they were having various uh, issues with each other's water supplies. Uh, the nuclear power plant was taking up too much water so that the crops weren't getting enough and were, weren't being productive. So it was a matter of the player would have to go around the island and try and fix uh, uh, something, but also they would see the repercussions. So if they were to, say, lower the water level in the dam, uh, to raise the water level for the crops, the, the power plant had to be shut down, and therefore nobody has electricity. So, so. depending, and I'm probably not saying this in good technical language, but depending on what you clicked, you would get a different reaction, so you could really learn the issue that way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You'd see the repercussions of your actions. Wow. And this uh, program, this game, actually won an award. Tell us about that. We, uh, we had about a group of... 10 to 12 people that uh, worked on it. We had our, our design group and our world building group. And um, I put it all together, about a six minute walkthrough video. And that's what we submitted to the university. And that's what they looked at when they decided that we were one of the four finalists. And I'm, I'm just amazed. That's fantastic. Yeah. You're all winning awards yeah. and, and obviously getting ready for a hot career in computer mm -hmm. gaming. Steve and Jen, thank you. And Deb, we'll have you back in our next segment. When we come back, we're, we'll be talking about developing games with a purpose. Stay with us. You're watching Campus Conversations. I do play video games. Video games, I do. I usually play stuff like Mario Party and all that kind of stuff. Um, the international uh, first person shooters, like I play on Battlefield 2, you play against um, different people, Japan, Russia, just call the country, they're there playing against you or with you. Um, Halo, uh, Need for Speed, uh, Black Hawk, just mostly action games. Super Mario is my favorite. XR Gaming, I'm not too sure. No, what is that? XR Gaming? I have no idea. I've never heard of it. And I don't know what it means. Um, would that be like DDR, where you get your exercise in while you play? Extra gaming is uh, along the lines of 
exercising while you play games? Basically, extra gaming, what it's all about is just rather than re in the regular game where you sit down in front of a computer or in front of a TV and just play, use your hands, you actually move your whole body along. Mm -hmm. Like exercising, you would sit in front of a TV and you would bike or dance, dance revolution. That's really it's all about just putting the rest of your body into motion rather than just sitting.